Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about a feature we've been working on in the past month. Um, it's called UI based ingestion. And I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, first, with a recap of the current state of the metadata uh, ingestion framework. Um, so, to ingest batch metadata into Data Hub, most of you are probably aware it's kind of a three step process. The first step is you install the Data Hub CLI from PyPy. Second step is you define a YAML source recipe where you say which you know, source you want to pull from and the configurations about that source, how to connect to it, uh, which tables, which databases to pull out of it. And then finally, you run this data hub ingest command in the CLI. Uh, so on the, on the right side here, you can see kind of that process in a picture. Um, we have the config and then we run that data hub ingest command. And this is all well and great. It actually has a really, uh, a lot of good things about it and some not as good things. So I'm just going to talk about what we view as the pros and the cons of the current metadata ingestion framework, the in batch metadata ingestion in particular. Um, you know, it's simple. We've tried to design the framework in a way that uh, has clean abstractions, clear separation of concerns. Um, it's easy to extend. You can add new systems pretty easily on your own. You can add custom systems to pull from. Um, it's scalable. Right. So by virtue of having sort of distributed producers of metadata, you can actually scale across environments. And this is particularly useful in really complex cloud setups that a lot of companies have today, or even in cases where larger companies have subsidiaries and they actually want to push metadata from multiple disparate places as opposed to having one centralized source. Uh, now we'll talk about the downsides of how we're doing this today. So uh, the major one is really just accessibility. Um, the framework is really intended to be consumed by a technical audience, right? Developers, sysadmins, people who are kind of comfortable going into the command line, um, but also operability, right? So once you've run that data hub ingest command for the first time, it's great. You, you have metadata in data hub, but it's not always clear how you actually productionize that, right? And kind of like schedule that on a recurring cadence, which is what you're going to most likely want to do. And so typically people end up using a third party scheduler, something like Airflow or, or Prefect. Um, so what we've done the last month is really just take a deeper look at uh, the cons here in order to see if we can kind of help address them in any ways. Um, and I think we came up with a couple of goals here, and that is to increase the accessibility, obviously, and reduce the operational overhead associated with operating the current metadata ingestion framework. Um, and the approach we took was kind of twofold. We wanted to simplify ingestion such that you know, users didn't need to code to ingest. And ingestion should take less than five minutes after you've set up Data Hub. So pretty much quick start, ingest some data within five minutes. But we also wanted to keep the good things about the metadata ingestion framework that I called out. You know, Continue to build on top of that as a basic building block as opposed to reinventing something completely new. If it ain't broken, uh, don't fix it. So what we came up with is a way to do UI-based metadata ingestion. And specifically, I'll talk through the feature set that we had in mind when we were first brainstorming this. And that was a recipe builder in the UI, a way to configure ingestion using a pre-built template or write your own custom recipe in the UI. On-demand execution, being able to run your recipes in a single click once you actually define them. Cron scheduling, so a way to actually schedule your recipe to be run on a continuous cadence, uh, kind of addressing that productionalization or authorization uh, issue. A secret store, a way to create, store, and embed encrypted secrets uh, that are injected at ingestion time in Data Hub itself. And real-time monitoring, so a way to actually monitor your pipelines as they run in real time. And so now I'm going to take a step back and do a quick demo of what we came up with in the last month. Um, this is all, I'm gonna disclaimer, this was working this morning. Um, so really hoping it's gonna work here. So we have a fresh instance of Data Hub. This is what you'd find if you ran Quick Start and went to localhost uh, you know, 9002. In this case, I have the local instance going. Um, you're gonna see immediately that we have a new tab up here called ingestion. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And right now we don't have anything, it's pretty bare, but I'm gonna walk through the process of setting up UI-based ingestion through this, through this portal here. And I'm gonna start by clicking create new source. 
And what you'll see is, you know, we've got a bunch of these pre-built templates uh, for, for different sources that are supported by Data Hub. And what I'm going to try to do is actually connect to the Data Hub MySQL instance itself. It's kind of meta. We're doing like a recursive thing here, uh, but let's see how it goes. So I'm going to click on MySQL. And what you're going to see here is actually, you know, an in-app recipe builder. And so I can actually come up here and click this and try to expand it a little bit. Um, that has sort of all of the configurations for the MySQL source already filled in. And if I have any questions about these, I can just, of course, go here and check out the MySQL source docs, see what the configs that are available are. But I'm pretty familiar with it, so I'm just going to go ahead and start filling it out. I'm going to be connecting to the Data Hub database, and <laughs> my username and password is finally just Data Hub. And then I'm finally, I'm just going to point this at GMS directly to, uh, to go with it. All right, so the next step is now that I've defined my recipe, um, actually scheduling that on a particular cadence. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule it for, for two minutes uh, from now. So I'm going to say 46. This is a cron scheduler, of course. Um, and I'm going to say every day. And what you're going to see is this is going to run at 9.46 AM. And I want it to run in America, Los Angeles time, because that's where I live. Of course, you can use ETC, something else. Uh, and then I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to say my SQL source one. Get done. And now we have a new ingestion source. And so if you hover over here, it'll show you, you know, it runs at 946. But you also notice that I have the ability to just go ahead and execute it. So I'm going to go over here and actually execute the source with the new recipe that I've just defined. And what you'll see is the source starts running. So I can click this to actually see all of the executions of this source. And I can see that it's running. So we'll just give it a couple seconds here to see if it finishes. Okay. So uh, what I have over here is a, a window. Let's see. Okay, great. So I can see that you know after 44 seconds the pipeline ran. I can click it and actually see some some in, uh, ingestion output. I can see that we connected to MySQL. We were able to run it, um, and we extracted a bunch of information. Um, so now if I go back home. The expectation is that I'll have some data. Yep. All right. I can, okay. Maybe the indices haven't been fully updated yet, but let's go ahead and try to get in here. Yep. So I've got my MySQL database loaded in, which is, which is great. Um, so actually, if we come back here, you're going to notice that it's actually running again. And that's because it's hit that scheduled 946 run. So you can see there's two source ways to execute. You can manually execute it, you can execute it on the schedule. Um, let's see if I refresh it. Yep. So that also succeeded. You can go ahead and, and check that out as well. Um, now I'm just going to show you quickly what it looks like uh, to define secrets. So that's one of the other bullet points I wanted to call out there. Um, you know, it's not uh, the case that you really want to put your sensitive information into this file directly in many cases, because this file itself it isn't necessarily encrypted. And so what we've come up with is a system within Data Hub to define secrets. And so what I'm going to do is come to the Secrets tab. I'm going to click Create New Secret. And this is a place where I can create a named value that will be encrypted by Data Hub and then resolved at ingestion time. So I'm going to create one called MySQL Username. I'm going to call it Data Hub. And then you know, my username. Create it. It'll take a second here to refresh. Let's make sure that's created. And then I'm going to create one called MySQL password. Same exact thing. I just will skip the description on this one. Okay, so I've got two new secrets. I'm going to go back into here. I'm just going to edit this source and I'm going to actually use that secret inside of my recipe. And so how you can do that is just the typical environment variable substitution. I'm going to say my SQL username, my SQL password, and then hopefully this just works. Next, done. 
All right, cool. Now we're going to execute it once more. <laughs> Let's make sure this uh, works this time. And then once this is done, I'll show you one last thing, which is uh, kind of what things look like when execution fails. So there's many cases in which execution can fail. You misconfigure a recipe or your secrets aren't properly defined. Um, so there you go, it succeeded. Uh, we did resolve those secrets and we were able to extract the metadata. Um, I can actually show you in, uh, the failure case by just maybe changing this to, you know, localhost a different port, uh, which, isn't, which isn't actually active. I'm trying to run it one more time. This one maybe will be a little bit quick. Okay, okay. Um, one other thing I'll call out is that you can, of course, cancel running uh, instances of the job as well. So I know some jobs can take a really long time or can get hung sometimes. Um, so you can go ahead and cancel that using the cancel button there. And you can see that it's failed because we, we failed to uh, properly set it up. And if you go into it, you'll actually see probably some debugging information about why that source failed. And I think it'll eventually say that it can't connect to um, you know, local host, no connection. So uh, this is really useful for, for us too, like as the central team, you know, when you're running these recipes, it's, it's gonna be really easy for you to share your screen or, or send these to, to us for us to kind of take a deeper look about why things maybe aren't working for you. The final thing I'll show is just the, the cancel, which I talked about, hopefully we get a run. Okay, so it's running. I'm just going to try to cancel and note that it won't remove any metadata that's already been ingested. And there you go. I, I went ahead and canceled that one. So um, that's pretty much the ingestion framework. You can actually see, you know, in this case with the cancellation, we got through some of the installation steps, but we didn't actually ingest anything. So you'll have a little bit of details in the case of the cancellation as well. Um, but that's that's pretty much it, I, I think, for the demo. So I'll go back to the, to the slides. All right, just a quick overview and pictures for what we built for people who weren't able to make the session. And now, as usual, uh, I'll talk a little bit about how this actually works behind the scenes for the technical audience who is interested. Um, so how this works is we have a few new critical components that we introduced, along with, of course, the UI screens that you saw. Um, we have, first of all, an embedded scheduler that we added into the metadata service that is simply responsible for listening to changes in your, you know, ingestion source schedules, and then actually scheduling them locally on a local thread uh, using a cron scheduler. And what this is doing is just running and executing ingestion requests on a, on a schedule. This means that if you take down the metadata service, when it comes back up, if you, if you missed a scheduled uh, ingestion, it'll simply ignore it and pick up where the schedule left off. So I think that's a pretty important piece there. Um, the other big, big piece that we've introduced is what we're calling the actions framework. And the actions framework is basically a, a, a subsystem that listens to changes in the metadata graph and then takes particular actions. So in the case of, of this, we actually built one action on top of the action frameworks, which is listening for requests to execute an ingestion source. And what it's doing is in turn using an executor, which we call it's like an agent, an executor, um, to actually handle that command. So to kind of validate, run the actual data hub ingest recipe. Um, so we're really excited about this. And, and the actions framework is going to be much broader than just ingestion. We're envisioning it to be a place where we can define actions on you know, tag changes, term changes, schema changes, and the like. And just a components overview again is we have this ingestion scheduler, an embedded cron scheduler inside of Data Hub Metadata Service. This is an important point because it means that we don't have to integrate with something like Airflow or Prefect or something else uh, as, a, as an add on to Data Hub. This is a native uh, capability. We have an actions framework, which I mentioned responds to changes in the metadata graph. We have an ingestion action, which just actually runs the ingestion. And then we have the, the executor, which is actually the worker, basically. And finally, I'll wrap up by talking about the vision for the future on this set of features in particular. Um, we would love to actually clean up some of the configs that you saw us having to define in the recipe builder. Specifically, the sync configurations aren't really that useful because we already know where your data hub instance lives. 
So you want to make that a little bit easier. We'd actually, in addition to that, like to put a form or a more friendly UI on top of the recipe builder experience uh, with the ability to switch back and forth between the, the normal YAML based editor and a more user friendly uh, you know, form. We'd like to add the ability to test your connection uh, to a data source directly inside of the recipe builder so that you can get that quick feedback without having to go and click execute and see that something's wrong. We'd like to actually have inflow secret creation. So as you're building that recipe, being able to just create a secret and embed that secret right inside that flow. And then finally, based on the demand from the community, we would love to introduce some sort of controls for rolling back ingestion runs into the UI, obvious with the obvious uh, upsides of that in the case of you know, bad ingestions. All right. And yeah, I just want to make one last call to action, help the core team prioritize these features. You can help us by you know, reaching out to us on Slack, letting us know what you like, what you don't like about it. And most, most useful of all, just trying it out when it's released, uh, trying to build some flows on top of it and really battle testing the feature. All right, uh, this is coming soon. We're targeting V1 rollout, which is everything you just saw in January 2022 by the end of, uh, end of the month. So really excited to, to get this out to the community and start getting some, some feedback.